What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pickup Performance. This is Justin here. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of how we put an LS4 onto a Theo Cradle. It's going to be uh, 87. There's not a huge difference between 87 and 88, but there's some minor ones. So I'm going to show you kind of how we do it. Got the bone yard out here. This is where dead Fieros come alive. Damn, look at that booty. So a little update on the my Fiero. I took the the intake off and the charge pipe. And a lot of you said just to go polish instead of powder coating it. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we got this nifty little thing. It's a short shifter. Uh, I had to modify it a little bit, just this bracket. So this shifter cable actually hits it. You can see it wasn't designed for this close range right here. So this is what actually makes it a short shifter. The other one came out here, and this is going to change the, the throw of it. So we just have to modify this bracket a little bit, and that should be ready to go. Don't mind the grease. I've broken a couple axles. <laughs> and actually, I broke another axle. Uh, this time, it was finally the passenger side. I was rolling into second gear and it snapped. So we got some, some plans coming up for how we're gonna make stronger axles. And I got another set of wheels. They're gonna be on the way here shortly. Uh, so no one can say I got cheap wheels anymore. <laughs> I can tell you that, but it's gonna look pretty nasty. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna show you the difference between the 88 cradle right here and the 87. For the ones of you who don't know the difference, I'm gonna show you. Uh, this one is an 80, well, 84 to 87. I'm pretty sure they're all identical, but if I'm wrong, someone can tell me. This one's already been modified for the, this one's the LS4 or 4T65. Uh, so we have our mounts on there. We use a four mount system, keep it nice and stiff. Um, the main difference between the two is the 88 is actually solid mounted. Solid mounted in the front and the rear. And these have bushings on the pre-88s. Another difference is you can see it side by side. This one's curved out more than the 88. Um, this front one is identical. And then I think that's, that's about it. I mean, other than where the, the control arms go, they're a little bit different, but there's not a huge difference. Obviously the 88s are better. Sorry if you don't own an 88, but 88s are superior. Get over your feelings. Also another difference between the 88 and the pre-88 cradles is with the change of the the control arm setup, these mounts go to the the spindle, and it's actually like a tie rod, and that's how you adjust your toe. The 88s actually have a trailing arm, and one of these links is the uh, toe adjustment. Uh, that's what makes these, in my opinion, they're a lot. I wouldn't say stiffer, but Newer design, just better technology. That's that's it. All right, so up on the table, I have a pre-88 cradle. And what we have to do is we have to cut out the factory engine mount. And that'll give us room for our oil pan to slide past here. Um, you can see this dollar sits right there. Actually, I think it's around. Yeah. It's gonna sit like that, build an ear here, ear here. This one's gonna sit here, grab a hold of the trans, two trans mounts. This one right here, gonna sit like that. And this one is gonna sit like that. And then it also bolts up to the engine and the stub shaft or center shaft, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and then we can fit up 
our mock-up motor and transmission. This is an LS4 with the four, uh, F40 transmission, six-speed manual. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people kind of doubt the F40. They don't think it holds power. We have two of our own personal cars that are LS4 or F40 swapped. You know, mine's making easily 550 and it's been holding up great other than axles. Um, our first one that we built is probably around 400 horsepower and we drive the crap out of it and the transmission loves it. Got the death wish right here. No guard on it, but hey, we ain't got OSHA around here, so we're just gonna send it. I'm gonna cut out this mount. I'm not gonna show you me cutting it because everyone's seen someone cut metal. So I'll show you what it looks like, show you where to cut it, and then we can uh, mock up the motor. Well, I still have all my fingers and toes and eyeball. Could have been a death wish, but you know, that's right, she's still held up. Got it cut all the way off. Of course, GM welded all the way around the melt, but you know, stitch weld the whole cradle. Okay. All right, so this is just a rough cut to get it out the way. Once I get the mounts on it uh, and weld it, I'll go back, sand up, get that clean. Uh, we ain't need that where we're going, so throw that in the trash. All right, I'm gonna get the, mo the motor mocked up now and get back to you. Shoe buddy, I got it. That was a pain in the ass. Normally my dad and I do this together. Uh, it's, it's really hard doing it by yourself. <laughs> um, but I got it on there. It's squared up. It's level to the cradle. Um, normally how we square it up is that the block has these ledges and you put something flat to go all the way across and then you can measure off your uh, cradle mounts and there's quite a bit of room in these you know you're going to have the center shaft that goes through here and this side it's a little bit tighter but there's plenty of room we have spacers under the front and that you know has our height there you have to uh, notch out a little bit for the oil filter. And then for the transmission, we normally line it up with this uh, original mount to this hole. And then we got spacers under the transmission and there's enough flex room right here. So now that this is on the cradle leveled with some extra insurance underneath the oil pan just to keep it from teetering now we can mock up the engine mount all right so we're going to start over here on this transmission i got this mount all snugged up and i cut out a bunch of these plates and we use these as tabs so we're going to mount those on either side and give it a nice little round you know profile dome shape so that it looks good so I'm gonna take this mount back off, grind the paint down, get these domed out, hole punched in it, and then I can weld those on. All right, we got our tomb stems cut out, our little tabs. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice. Put a bolt in there. It's hard to do one hand. Need a film guy. All right. Bam, that's what it's gonna look like. So now we can pull it off, grind the paint down and weld it. So also another thing we've noticed in the past couple years doing these swaps is sometimes we'll see a crack between these two mounts. Um, and it's a good idea if you're doing a swap, even if you're not doing a swap, if you have your cradle out for any reason, grind this area down or look at it, if there's a crack, just grind it and weld it. And what we normally do is once we put our mounts in there, we'll put a little plate in there and it stiffens up this whole area. That way it doesn't happen again. So a little tech tip, check it out. All right, and just like that, we got one mount down. Got this welded all the way around. Got the little plate in the middle for a little bit of added structural integrity. 
once we get this whole setup off the table, I'll finish welding like the back side where I can't get to. And then take the bushings off, weld this mount, plug weld this hole that we're not using. And there's one mount that we can go to the next. All right, so next we're going to an engine mount. It's got a three bolt plate. We left this hole open because this is where your AC mounts. So you got that mount, and that mount, and that mount for your AC. You're going to take some angle, mount it like that. Have your tombstone in there. That one's not tombstone yet. But it's going to get you something like that. So we'll go ahead and grind off the paint and get it welded up. All right, so we got this angle welded on. Throwing down some dimes with a big welder. Not the best welder, but been practicing. And so these tabs are a little bit different. And you know, we don't want to just put these square tabs on there and you know just a bunch of squares welded together. So we actually have some CAD that we use. And these ones are gonna have just a little bit of rake to it. That way they're just not plain old squares welded. Just to make it look a little bit nice. So we'll get those cut out. And we'll do together. All right, so we got this side, the tabs made. I only tacked them on there, so I'm starting to run out of some welding gas. So this side's about done. Once we get the mock-up engine off there, I'll finish weld everything and paint it. But I started on this side. So this mount is a two-piece mount. Um, this is where your center shaft is gonna sit. It's gonna weld to this plate. The center shaft goes from here to the axle and then there's a bracket on here that gets welded there so for this one got this one cut out already it's going to sit in there like that that we rotated and welded there and then this other side is going to require just a little bit more cutting it's got to be notched out to go around the cradle so i'll get that cut out tacked on and then Move to this next side, which I think is the hardest side just because you got to get up inside of the cradle and it's just not a whole lot of room when you got a mock up engine on there. All right, so this other side engine mount is done. Got it nice, flush cut all the way around, tacked up on both sides. I just used a piece of aluminum template that I can cut around it. It's a lot easier than steel. Upgraded from CAD. I didn't have any cardboard laying around. But this next transmission mount, this is the harder one, like I said. Um, so I already got the mount sitting in there. And we're just gonna use some angle. I'll cut it to the profile of the, the cradle. It's gonna slip. Let me show you. It'll slip in there, you know, something like that. I'll probably use another cradle. Well, I got another one sitting over there that. I can use it'll just make it easier give me some more room to work on i'll take some measurements you know rough cut stuff just to get it in here but let me get going on that and i'll show you where i get all right and just like that we got the fourth mount done so both pieces of angle are in there tacked down and that's that's pretty much it um one thing to make it easier on this side is there's a little bit of metal that you can cut away just to slide the angle in there uh, i'll show you on this one over here uh, so what i did is i went ahead and cut pretty much from here to here and straight up and same thing with that um so you cut a little bit of weld but i'll re-weld it and it'll be strong so that pretty much wraps up you know how to swap an ls4 f40 into a pre-88 cradle all four mounts are tacked in there and it's ready to be pulled off and finished welded and painted. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. A little DIY on how you swap an LS4 F40 into a pre 8 cradle. It's almost identical to the 88s, but maybe I'll make another video on how to swap into the 88s and even, you know, 40, 65 for those guys that wanna go automatic. So thanks for watching. Um, hope this helps if you want to do your own swap. But uh, we'll see you next time.